data coordinators, and CalPADS, building resilience by increasing local capacity. Please allow us a few minutes of your time so that we can describe how CSIS is focusing our training efforts on increasing the capacity of local education agencies. Student data is varied and increases each year in CalPADS as well in other data collection systems. There are several purposes for the collection of school data. It is used for accountability, to meet state and federal legislation, to determine funding, and most importantly, used to drive local decisions to better serve students. Our mantra at CSIS is better data, better schools. With that in mind, our mission in client services is to help LEAs build partnerships, develop best practices, and maximize local capacity to serve California's children. With that focus, we are redesigning how we train and would like to share an excerpt from a recent training explaining our new direction. We're really focusing on increasing local capacity and building skills. And we've had a lot of internal discussions of how to do that. And so what we've done in this training is we've tried to identify skill sets that will help you throughout the submission and what we can include in this training. And so we'll give you an example of some of these skills such as critical thinking or possibly project management, and hopefully that they can be implemented in your submission and as a practice for your LEA. Ultimately, what you see here is coalition builder, data leadership, project management, and critical thinking. These skills are the ones that we know that are exhibited by successful LEAs throughout their submission window. And so we'll just talk about some of the things that you will see or that you will do in these skills, right? So you think about building a team or a coalition, um, you have to be able to identify who and to receive their support from your different people throughout the data ecosystem. So when you're talking about special education, the data isn't just in your said system because your student has an entire profile. So the SIS and the SEDS data coordinator need to be on the same page, as well as possibly your teaching staff, the special education staff, because they may be the ones doing the data entry into the SEDS. And then of course your SELPA. Some SELPA submit the data, but they all at least monitor and review to make sure that you're in compliance. So you have several different systems as well as several different people throughout your data ecosystem that all need to be working together. Having a team and a coalition will be able to leverage your data assets, not just for reporting. The reporting is the back end, but ultimately you want to use your data to drive better decisions to better serve the kids. And then when you're building your coalition, you form alliances. And so if you're new uh, in CalPADS, it's nice to have that self a contact or that contact at the COE with SEDS experience. Sometimes you're not the one who's submitting the data. It's good to have a relationship. You can call someone and say, this is my enrollment on this student. I'm getting an error. Can you update SACE or Cyrus? And they can do it quickly because you have you've have that uh, alliance. You have that relationship. And as you go forward with changes, it's important to have that team. Then we talk about data leadership. To be successful, you have to, regardless of your position, initiate and organize data education within your LEA. If that's just telling your staff where you can go to get CalPads resources or showing them directly, this document does this, this document does that. The SIS data coordinator probably has the most experience in CalPads in the organization. And it's better to share your wealth of knowledge and make it readily available to all those who have to interact with CalPads. We talk about establishing a local network of stakeholders. Previously, we always emphasize your data stewards as far as reviewing reports. But as CalPads grows, you want to have that network contribute on the front end. You want them to be submitting data, verifying data. You want the practice and implementation in your districts to be in line with the business rules as they are directed from the CDE. And that goes towards developing local procedures, specifically for CalPads for reporting and collection. But ultimately, you always want to be in compliance. You always want to be doing uh, what's in the best interest of the students. And then project management, right? That's a big one because we have deadlines and timelines. And for end of year four, staff won't be available. People take vacations. Some staff aren't 12 month staff. And so you have to establish your own local timelines. It's very important that you understand when data is doing cow pads, but your staff's availability, when can it be done? Um, it's possible all your staff won't be available 
and that our recommended submission calendar doesn't serve your interests. You want to establish a calendar of availability and requirements, and you want to set your calendar for your LEA. You want to be as successful as possible, and you're going to have to spearhead that. And so that's why we put project management. Again, some of us aren't in a position that has authority within our organization because we have access and the knowledge. It's just something that you have to initiate on your own. And then most importantly, we really want to talk about critical thinking. There's always a lot of changes in CalPads. We expect a big change how files are posted in the fall. And so to increase your local capacity, to make sure everyone is resilient to change, as well as accepting, we really want to promote critical thinking. And so we want to stop training uh, in the future for this is what's needed. This is what you do. And more so, this is how you do it. These are the skills that you need to exhibit. When you think about uh, fall one, end of year, fall two, you always have to review reports and what's the meaning of these reports and what resources do you need uh, to identify discrepancies or verify uh, your aggregate counts. When you're troubleshooting errors, whether they be cert errors or uh, submission errors, right? You have to be able to solve problems and use a, a consistent and true and tried methodology so that you don't always have to submit a service ticket, right? The information is there. You just need to know how to, to go about, right? And then if you take all the steps and it still doesn't make sense, you can submit a ticket. Maybe it's a known issue, but you should have a methodology of, of troubleshooting. And that goes again to critical thinking, right? Understanding what CalPads is looking for, how the validation triggers, what documents do I need to verify this, right? And so you may have to go beyond the error list to the data guy, the CFS, the valid code combo, so on and so forth. And so I took a little bit of time on this slide just because it's new and this is the direction that we're headed in.